let's get started with flight. One of the most common abilities you will ever come across, users of this power have the ability to move through the air using various methods that include, but are not limited to, wings, energy, anti-gravitons, machinery, and or by mimicking or imitating an animal or creature that can achieve this themselves. And in addition to that, users that also have the ability to fly are usually seen being able to levitate, slide, or glide through the air. Even if the ability to fly comes from various sources from varying people, such as sticking your hands out in front of you and leaping in the air, versus telekinetically grabbing yourself and pulling yourself through the air, they all seem to be able to accomplish the same feat. I mean, birds do it, bees do it, so what is it about flight that makes it so fascinating and mystifying to where humans, whether real or imaginary, have dedicated lives, resources, and a bastion of popular culture to uncovering the mystery of it? Hey, guess what? Keep listening. The advantage of height has always been desired by not only predators, but prey as well. And I'm not just talking about being taller than others, I'm talking about being able to look downward from up on high, being able to survey your landscape and identify anything of importance. I think it's an understatement to say that this can mean the difference between survival and, well not. The concept of flight not only comes from birds, but from the various legends and myths of human existence. Whether it be Pegasus, a winged horse that a brave warrior rode into battle to slay a chimera, or Icarus, who in order to escape imprisonment by King Minos, made wings of feather and wax and flew to freedom, only to fly too close to the sun. The earliest concepts of flight came to us in stages, starting with kites. We have the Chinese to thank for that because the first instance of the kite were used by them in religious ceremonies in the BC era. By building many wonderful kites for entertainment, while more sophisticated ones were used to test weather conditions, this led to the concept being passed to the rest of the world, a better the slow pace. This continued into other creations such as the Elipo, created by the hero of Alexandria, which consisted of a spear on top of a water kettle. The fire below the kettle turned the water into steam and gas traveled through the pipes under the spear. Two L-shaped tubes on the opposite sides of the spear allowed the gas to escape, which gave thrust to the spear and caused it to rotate. Sounds a lot like levitation, doesn't it? What about Leonardo da Vinci? The brilliant polymath who created dozens of blueprints for flying machines, the most noticeable being the Omnithopter. Although this was never actually created, it led to the creation of the helicopter as we know it now. All these inventions, whether they be hot air balloons or gliders, they led to Orville and Wilbur Wright, two brothers who with the help from a kite created and perfected flight in the first airplane that used an adequate fuel source. And in doing so, they discovered how wind would affect an object in the air. An ability that has portrayed so much that it has become second nature to us and other characters in fiction, the power of flight has had an effect on not just popular culture, but the real world as well. At first, being something that humans only used to imagine in their dreams, or when we saw when we looked up at a passing bird, has today become a dream that has been made into a reality as the creation of aeronautics, the study of science of flight, has made tremendous headway in designing an airplane or flying machine for actual flight. This allows us measly humans the ability to conquer the sky and no longer play second fiddle to any flying creature. Now it goes without saying that all humans are subject to realism. You know, the undeniability of the many harsh truths in this world. Whether you choose to acknowledge that or not, that's another matter. That's where idioms such as both feet on the ground, or don't let the grass grow beneath your feet come from. It cements the truth of all humans and their limits, the practical, the pragmatic, and the prudent gospel of the world that states humans are destined to live their lives roaming the earth, searching for meaning, and can only look up in wonder at the birds and the bugs who don't seem to share these limitations or restrictions. As we continue to stare upward, even when confused or downtrodden, we imagine flying away, leaving all of our problems behind, as this can and often time will offer us a way out of rules and restrictions of our mundane lives. And that's what the power of flight symbolically represents, imagination and hope. An ability like this is often associated with freedom, 
in the most metaphorical and metaphysical sense, the power to be unrestricted and untethered to earthly problems. And because we humans have annotated flight with the concept of otherworldliness, faith, grace, and superiority, wait, why superiority? <laughs> Simple, because of hierarchy. Things that appear to be taller, bigger, or higher than us instill a sense of unattainability and all humans loathe to be looked down upon. <laughs> or is it just me? We relate this to things that share those majestic qualities, such as angels, spirits, birds, or even divine beings. And the psychology behind it is pretty easy to grasp. Not that I'm a psychologist or anything, but putting it simply, doing things such as walking to get where you need to go, climbing to get over something, or running to evade danger takes effort. And that's what makes life miserable. Whether you enjoy that aspect of it or not, the force that humans exert, it demeans us in some way or fashion. When we see something glide or soar through the air almost effortlessly, the appearance of weightlessness, whether that's true or not, gives us wonder, while at the same time filling us with envy at our own shortcomings as a species. Users of this power are normally seen to be extremely positive, pure, almost carrying a regal, ethereal, or mysterious presence. They tend to represent advancement and efficiency, with colors that range from white, yellow, golden blue, heck, let's throw in a silver or a shiny gray for safe measure. But in all honesty, an ability this well-known comes in many shapes and forms, and that would reflect on the users as well, who aren't portrayed in any particular role or fashion style. I mean, maybe a cape, but in addition to that, there's no consistent factor for an ability like this. Only that it allows the user to travel through the air via whatever methods they can use to accomplish this. Normally a stock superpower in whatever setting or genre it's placed in, meaning a give me power, users of this ability are normally paired with super strength, which creates the famous flying brick trope. I don't think I have to say who that applies to. You don't know, go pick up a book. You should be ashamed of yourself. God. In less modern settings, the ability is associated with magical, ethereal, or supernatural properties, while more modern settings apply the theory of technology or science to provide an explanation of his method. But like I said earlier, this ability can be mimicked or imitated with almost any other ability if the user is creator enough. Users are usually portrayed having high speed and mobility as well as dexterity, but without the combination of other powers, they'll usually be lacking any other department, making them not so specialized. Now with the power of flight comes the ability to grow or produce wings with wing manifestation, if applicable to your power. Being able to initiate combat in the air as easy if you were on the ground with aerial combat mastery. The user can perform aerobatic stunts while flying such as turns, loops, barrel rolls, spins, and fly in any position that the user finds themselves in with aerobatics. They're able to cause themselves or other objects to hover or float in the air unassisted with levitation. They can move through the air or other gases without wind or gas currents affecting their movement with gaseous current defiance and gaseous movement. They're able to sail through the air at a slower pace than falling without being able to apply any thrust to extend their own flight with gliding. And they're able to do the same thing but on a surface of an object with sliding. Users are also able to jump indefinitely and repeatedly while mid-air and not making contact with any solid surface with infinite jumping. And that's just the beginning. More advanced users are capable of high-speed flight. The ability to uh, fly at higher speeds. Hmm. Who wrote this again? They're also able to manipulate the ability to fly in themselves or others via flight manipulation. They also possess the ability to accommodate and breathe in any gaseous medium, whether hostile or deficient, which is a painful way to die, with atmospheric adaptation. They can move so gracefully in the air, it borders on otherworldly with midair maneuverability, a more advanced form of aerobatics. And as a product of this power, they have the capability to move while being completely motionless via 
motion paradox. Now this ability can get a little confusing for those less knowledgeable, so let's take some time to get this straight. If you're having trouble with this, think of an advanced form of levitation. You yourself don't move a muscle, but you're still able to proceed through the air or on land at your fastest speed. This is mainly used for dramatic effect to show that the character is barely putting any effort into flying. But the best of the best users of this power are capable of magical flight. You know, flying using magic or some kind of magical energy. Flying using your own life source with life force flight. They're also able to laugh at Sir Isaac Newton himself and perform Newtonian motion defiance. Essentially, ignoring the laws of motion, such as inertia, gravity, impact, and acceleration for impossible movement. And as long as we're making Sir Isaac Newton turn in his grave, let's add self-exertion, the ability to exert a force on yourself without the need of another object, or pushing on another surface. And last but certainly not least, we have interstellar travel. Being able to travel in the never-ending, soul-crushing, empty void of space, unaided. Where'd I get that from? I feel like I got that from something. And there you have it, flight in a nutshell. An ability that has sparked wonder in the hearts and minds of all who've heard and seen it in action. It'd be hard to believe that a seemingly simple power like this would have as many applications as it does. It certainly surprised me, but if you think about it, it makes sense. Flying's all fun and games until you run out of oxygen, as the majority of it that we freely breathe stays pretty close to the ground. Meaning, the higher that you get, the less concentrated you'll find it. And if you don't have a body that can handle the different atmospheric pressures and temperatures, meaning no flight suits, that'll give you another reason to believe you can't touch the sky. And forget thinking about it every night and day. With no wings or anything to propel you, you can't fly away. <laughs> but no, seriously, flying at super speeds without a host of secondary superpowers wouldn't even make this feasible, i.e., you wouldn't survive a high-speed trip to the store. Couple all that with the inability to control or change directions while in the air, and forget trying to carry another person while flying, because if you can't carry them on the ground, you aren't carrying them in the air. And if you can't survive in space, please don't fly there, unless, I think you see where I'm going with this. This power needs other abilities in conjunction with it to make it even as interesting as we see it on TV. And now, with all that out of the way, it's time to place this ability on the scale. Flight has dozens of applications inspired by hopes and dreams. From initial liftoff to soaring through the sky, the ability to fly is one desired by all. But without a host of secondary powers, this power isn't as impressive as one might think. But taking in all the possible applications, it's still pretty useful. So, on a scale of one to 10, the Shea scaling system gives this power a soaring four. Great if you hit the superpower lottery with this power, but if not, completely unimpressive. Thanks for watching. You guys think of any more applications for this power? Jot it down in the comment section. Start a discussion. The index doesn't grow without you. I'll be back with an entirely new power, breakdown, and analysis pretty soon. Deuces.